Intel decided its core truce was a bad idea. Nvidia's taking more RAM away from you. And AMD finally fixed their biggest issue. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brad Post. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, December 7th, 2023. How you doing? Categorically unviable black hole of entertainment. You ready to embark upon uh, the black hole that is <laughs> Intel posting their core truce document that we talked about earlier in the week on Hot News. It essentially just called AMD out for releasing a Zen 2 CPU as a brand new thing here in 2023, even though that was launched in 2019. But you can no longer get it out on the internet. <laughs> they took it down. Turns out that calling a company out for something that you are also literally doing and are not actually actually spotless in just seems to be a bad move. I want to know the bureaucracy that went behind this. Like who decided we need to put out this document and then also who decided that like a snake oil slide <laughs> was truly appropriate? Did anybody download this? Is this still available? Is this on the pirate bay? Can I torrent this? <laughs> <laughs> we just need to hold it to preserve the history yeah. of the, the time that Intel thought that they could uh, they could clap back at AMD. I need a hard copy that I'm gonna burn to a floppy disk. <laughs> oh, well, you know what? We burned to a t-shirt. We don't have a video sponsor for today, but we do have some brand new merch. If you would Woo! like to check out the categorically unviable black hole, uh, we got one of our graphic designers here at UFD Tech <laughs> to make a piece of merch and we have it listed in case you want it. This is uh, one of the, the running Titan emotes in Fortnite yeah. with, that they did with the collab of Attack on Titan. There was an Attack on Titan collab? Yes, there was. Oh, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. I don't have any challenge of like, I'll wear the shirt <laughs> until the end of the year. I regret this wholeheartedly. I don't, I don't think people are really gonna buy this, but we made it in case you want it. That's it. <laughs> Black hole, man. <laughs> entertainment black hole. And it was gonna be a money pit black hole for Intel where they were gonna have to pay out $2.18 billion to a patent infringement lawsuit to the company VLSI that got ruled in 2021 saying that Intel was guilty of this. However, Intel submitted an appeal because they thought that this was not right. Also kind of pushing back that VLSI is actually a patent troll and not actually the people who invented the technology and have a real right to defend it. So a judge has now overturned that. Intel no longer has to pay it, but there is likely going to be a further appeal and there's gonna be a trial for ongoing legal issues between these two companies in 2024. So it's gonna continue onwards, but at least a, a minor W for Intel. They took down the core truce document and they don't have to pay $2 billion. Great. It's a wash. The rich people don't have to spend rich people money. It's real. That's that's a real amount. Think of how many Bajas you could buy with $2.1 billion. Oh, probably. You could resurrect the entire line. If you went to <laughs> Subaru and you're like, hey, here's $2 billion, bring back the Baja. They probably would. Think about having 2 billion of anything. I have 2 billion atoms. I want 2 billion pennies. That's a lot of money. Give me them. That's all. Black hole. <laughs> well, Google has given us new AI. They launched their Gemini AI yesterday. There were earlier reports that I didn't cover in hot news that they were supposed to be delayed until next year. Turns out that was all a fictionalization because Gemini AI has launched and Google is hoping that it can actually take on OpenAI and GPT-4. In fact, they also announced a few new accelerators and TPU units that they can use in order to accelerate their neural net. But GPT-4 is gonna lose to Gemini, especially when you look at the benchmarks of Gemini Ultra, because there's three different versions, Gemini Nano, Pro, and Ultra. So that they can paywall it. No, so that they can feel like like they're Apple. Oh. Are you kidding? Nano, Pro, <laughs> Ultra? Those are iPod and iPad words. Mm -hmm. it, my, Apple Watch Ultra, come on. But they showed that in the benchmarks, the Gemini Ultra beats GPT-4 in most of the benchmarks. It loses at hella swag, because of course it does, by a, a significant margin, eight percentage points, but it wins in everything else. And it turns out both of them are still really bad at math. Don't use it for your math homework, but Gemini is launching on Bard as of yesterday as well as the Gemini Nano is coming to local devices so it can run on things like the Pixel 8 Pro. And Google did have some demonstrations. It does seem like a relatively competent language model that can be helpful. It's designed from the ground up to be multimodal so it can use voice, text, and images and not just, you know, text input. It can do all of that and it was built from the ground up. Gemini Ultra though is not supposed to launch until next year. So the benchmarks that they're putting out comparing it to GPT-4 it's a little, little sus. 
because they haven't launched that version and GPT-5 obviously should be on its way at some point. So this is, Google was caught a little off guard with the launch of OpenAI and uh, ChatGPT. They are now trying to catch up. They still feel a little bit behind the eight ball, but they're, they're making strides and progress to move forward on it. What were they showing off on their, their little conference thing like that i know that was the thing i played the video yeah the, so that was their demonstration video where the presenter was communicating via voice yes to gemini yeah but how what device was he using it's to... not quite clear you like one would can... presume a phone it just it wasn't clear to me i'm like i thought that i thought he was like you it was supposed to be smart glasses or something i couldn't tell if they they were like trying to imply that there was a new product that was necessary to communicate with it. It just seemed very vague. Well, that was like their favorite moments demo that you saw where the guy was drawing like a duck and it was like, yeah. that's a duck. Yeah. And it's like, okay, cool. It's, <laughs> it's to show that it's competent, right? Like that it could handle so many different sections. It could interpret somebody's drawing. It could in the, create a game. It could take the yarn that you're holding and to come up with a uh, synthesization that you could, you know, actually knit together out of said yarn. It was cool. I don't know if it was revolutionary. I think Google missed the boat on impressing people. If yeah. they had launched this last year before ChatGPT, people would have lost their minds. But now we kind of just expect that AI is going to do those things. But I'm going to wait and yeah, see until somebody the, does something cool with it. The main hey. difference here is that ChatGPT was text-based first. And then as they're, and they had like Dolly, which was image-based first. Mm -hmm. and so they, they had separate AIs that could do separate things. Now with Gemini, it was built from the ground up to do all of it at once, like ChatGPT has already become. So Google lost because they built the most complicated version, whereas ChatGPT built the most simple version and then iterated upon it. Okay. And Apple is starting to get into the AI side of things. They released- Great, another one. <laughs> <laughs> this one's a little less. They didn't put out a press release or anything like that. They just launched a model framework that you can actually use on Apple Silicon so that you can start learning to develop for Apple Silicon moving forward there, saying that they were inspired by things like frameworks like PyTorch, Jax, and ArrayFire. So they have their framework MLX that they are launching on GitHub for devs and everybody to take a look at. So Apple's not hyping up the AI at okay. this point, but they're just slowly entering into it. And I mean, what do they need AI for? They got, they could bring back the Baja if they wanted. Oh, an Apple Baja? Could you imagine the price tag? <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully Reese can save us a little bit of money on that. Yo, welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. And hey, deals. Starting off today, we have the Team Group T4's Vulcan Z DDR4 RAM kit featuring 16 gigs of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz at CL16 for only $35.99, which if you think about the prices just a little while ago, this seems nutty. But then we also have the Audio-Technica ATR 2500X USB condensed microphone for only $48.54. And then last but not least, we have the Samsung Viewfinity S50 GC, which is a 34 inch 21 by 9, 1440p, 100 hertz monitor for only $249.99, making it $130 off. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you all back to Brett and Kyler for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Reese, I got a great deal for you, and that's you can get some free items. Do you want a free Steam Deck OLED? I'm not giving it away, but tonight <laughs> during the Game Awards, Valve is gonna give away a hundred of these Steam Deck OLED one terabytes, not the limited edition, and this is actually not the one terabyte because we already gave that one away. Doesn't matter, they don't know. It has a glossy screen. Anybody paying it really close attention would have noticed. But additionally, Lenovo is giving away a hundred Legion Go's. That's more than I can hold. It is free stuff tonight during the Game Awards, 7.30 Eastern, in case you want to watch that. You're going to be playing darts. Probably. But you can watch it live, likely on Twitch. However, if you like to watch Twitch and you're from South Korea. Ripperoni. Yep, I, that was a really bad segue. I was trying to tie it into the live no, stream it, aspect. It almost kind of worked. But Twitch announcing that as of February of next year, they are going to be shutting down in South Korea and saying that it's just far too expensive for them to be able to do it. They took significant effort to try to figure out could they come up with a cheaper model for them to be able to deliver the live streaming service over in South Korea, including even trying peer-to-peer -peer connection, limiting streams to 720p. They 
allegedly, according to Twitch themselves, worked very hard, especially with content creators in Korea to figure out a way to do this. But because South Korea has a sending party network pays model, which means that the service has to pay a tax in order to deliver content, they actually have to pay way more in South Korea, according to them, over 10 times the average amount that they pay in every other country, which makes it just unprofitable and unreasonable for them to continue to operate in that country. That sucks. I, yeah, I read a lot of responses to this and it seems like a lot of the Korean creators aren't blaming Twitch at all. They know that this is a problem with the economic model that's set up for ISPs in South Korea. Twitch did work really hard. This is one of the rare instances where Twitch is doing something bad and it's not because they're being a horrible company. It's because they legitimately tried and could not come up with a reasonable solution. Yeah, it gives me the, the whole net neutrality drama that happened years ago. Yeah. It gives me some of those vibes. Yeah, we probably would have a worse model here in the US had some of those things go through. Mm -hmm. Speaking of worse models though, you want a worse graphics card? Well, NVIDIA, <laughs> oh! they're gonna take away some of your VRAM if you're looking to buy an RTX 3050. You thought one of those bad boys had eight gigabytes of VRAM. Nope, now it's going to have six because it's just gonna make it easier for them to ship out more of these RTX 3050s. I thought they stopped making them. No, they did not stop making the 3050s. They stopped making the higher end versions because mm. those would compete with the mid tier, right? Like if you could get a 3080 for 400 bucks, why would you get a 4070? Would it? Mm. The 4050 is going to be priced at a point where like the 3050, you can drop it a little bit. They can, they could afford to lose a little bit of money on that. So Nvidia removing some VRAM there. Now the 4050 doesn't look so bad, does it? 4060 doesn't look so bad. And the 4090 looking even better because the 4090D, we got some specs on that. It's allegedly on track to launch sometime next year. It's going to have a faster base clock, but a slower boost clock and fewer cores. That's currently the plan, which is what that's, NVIDIA needs to sell it in China. That's something. That is, that's a decrease, but not in price. They're gonna charge China the exact same amount for it. Yeah. And AMD is gonna charge you the exact same price for a better graphics card because they just launched a very, very healthy driver update. Let's just give a round of applause to AMD for launching a good driver. I don't hate AMD for the, Whoa. For, hey, for a lot of people who watch, they think I just can never give AMD their props. And they finally did a lot of good stuff. They added hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, which is a feature that has been out on Windows for three years, but now it's finally here on AMD, but not if you have the RX 7600, only if you have the 7700 and above, nothing else, not the 7600 or below. Your canter reminds me of somebody who just switched from Android to iOS and they are like weirdly happy about the features that iOS just got that yeah. Android's had for years. That's exactly what's <laughs> happening with hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. But also they launched Hyper RX Eco, which is supposed to be a new power system efficiency to the entire GPU and- No, that's the name of a sports car. Yes, and- they finally fixed their biggest issue with the RX 7000 series GPUs. RDNA 3, idle power draw has been fixed. Oh, good job, AMD. Over a year since the GPU launched, the new driver updates, you can see the 7800 XT, 7700 XT, 7600 suffered the most egregious ones from this. 33 watts, the 7800 XT drew at idle. And now with the new drivers, it's down to 12.9. 7900 XT is up a little bit, but it does look like AMD is making strides to make their GPUs better, aging like fine wine. Hopefully we might hear that the 7900M gets better idle power efficiency because that was the biggest issue with that. It's supposed to be a very powerful laptop GPU, but if you lose battery in 20 seconds, it doesn't really matter how fast it is because you can't use it off the wall, even when you're not trying to game. Weren't we just talking about their laptops being grossly inefficient because of stuff like this? Yes, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm referencing. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly it. Which one of the comments that we got to that was like, who unplugs a gaming laptop? And it's like, fair. A lot of people, not to game because Windows is just trash at it. Like that's the best part of Apple's MacBook lineup is that you get the same performance on the wall or off the wall. It's great. And you get great battery life too. It's done. There is a platform that delivers that. You just can't play video games. But then on Windows, we're like, why would you ever unplug it? Because it's a laptop. I want to move around with it, but I can't oh. expect to do that. But the problem here isn't that the power draw is high under load. It's that the power draw is high when you're not doing anything. If I'm trying to watch a YouTube video, my laptop battery is gone in 30 seconds. Those fans That's are heavy. That's faster than Nicolas Cage. In what? He's typically gone in 60 seconds. Ghost Rider. 
hardly know her. I bet you some people use a ghostwriter for their comments. Let's read them now. Freelancer system saying, I've used the original beeper since it came out and I can't see myself going back to old, iPhone. Old person alert. Categorically unviable. <laughs> but I have family and friends that use iMessage and don't want to switch messaging service. So having beeper mini makes talking to people with iPhones a smoother experience. Even reactions work instead of using a second text to convey it. I'm a fan of the beeper team. They've put a lot of work into making their service viable. I trust that they're on top of keeping things secure. And so far I haven't had any hiccups. That's good to know. I'm, I'm glad that's what I want, right? Like number one, this should have been done by Apple years ago. Having an iMessage app on Android, why not? Why did they not do that? because they didn't want it. Exactly, yeah. no, I, it's it's frustrating. This should have happened from Apple. They chose not to do it. This is a great stopgap, especially until Apple implements RCS next year. I want it to work out. I want it to be secure. I want there to be no problems. It took a random teenager to figure out how to do it. That's like the history of the internet. Remember when that one teenager hacked an ATM? No, I he wasn't got, there for I think that. he got arrested or something. Did he at hope least get to keep the money? Hope he's doing okay. I don't know. <laughs> Broke Dad One says, I'm glad Brett is able to keep communicating with Kyler across the great divide. I've really lost interest in GTA 6 and most not all of the newer releases. And I think that many others have too, especially those who grew up with, as kids with gaming in the past decades. I don't know if that's true. I have seen more hype for GTA 6 than nearly any other game I've ever seen. I mean, it is. And it could be fresh faces, but it also feels like people who grew up with the series as well. GTA 5 has been out for 10 years. Yes. Like I grew up with San Andreas and like GTA 4 was what I played a lot as a kid. Now you're an adult with a job. Yeah, I consider myself to have grown up with Grand Theft Auto, but also I know kids plenty younger than me have grown up with it at this point. And I think we all just want to play it. I think there's more excitement. I don't know. Let me let me know uh, in the comments. Are you feeling more or less enthusiasm for video games? And I think I, I want to separate out games as a service. So like remove Destiny, remove Fortnite, remove COD, right? Like those are not the ones I'm talking about, but like single player or multiplayer like experiences that like are from trusted developers. Are you excited about those things or are you growing weary? And I personally think it's less about like the online. I don't even, I feel like they're not gonna have online when GTA 6 launches. Probably that, not. That's what GTA not. 5 did. There wasn't online for the first like month or two. But that that's how they also did Red Dead 2 as well. Makes sense. Yeah, they didn't launch it with online. That came later. I'm just excited for the single player campaign because I really liked GTA 5s and I feel like is not enough people talk about it. it. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Really? Yeah. How long is it? I don't think it's crazy long. I actually finished it as a kid and I never did that. It's that Zoomer energy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maya saying, Brett and Kyler together as hosts is like having NVIDIA and AMD GPUs in the same system. It's bound to freak some people fanboys out, but the synergy is apparently amazing. Is it? I like having you around. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> You're different than Reese. Mm -hmm. but different enough in a way where it doesn't feel like you replaced him. It feels like you're just, you're also part of what's happening here. <laughs> hey, I'm saying I've, I'm trying the Beeper Mini seven day trial. It's worked flawlessly, but I wish the app supported SMS and RCS as well, so I don't need multiple apps. This is coming though. Also fun fact, my two factor from Apple thinks Beeper Mini is an iPhone seven. It is. Hmm. Team Tinez saying, dude, 25 to 44? Crap, I'll be 44 in January. I guess I'll have a year left to watch. Love the show banter and deals. Keep up the good work, guys, and let the hatters hate. They will keep watching because the content is superior. So here's the good thing for you. I'm also getting older. So I'm I'm going to be older next year. So mm. theoretically, our demographic should shift. That's not slightly how- Slightly older. That's not how marketing works. I get, oh. I'm getting more mature. I don't want to keep talking to you Zoomers. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to stay with my millennial buds. Also, we're the new boomers. Quite a few people I, I saw, and by quite a few, probably like three, but <laughs> handful of people were saying that they were about to age out of the demographic. I saw more than just that comment. I said 70%. We do also, like, <laughs> we also have a sizable chunk that goes 45 till death. <laughs> 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 Lester says, Kyler's Princess Diaries moment when he removes his glasses and goes from categorically unviable sidekick to he was really viable this whole time. Oh my gosh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't put that back on. No, no. Oh, no. He's categorically unviable. Please buy our merch. We'll see you tomorrow for more of the... Uh, most unviable tech news out on the internet. A, 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 A.